All right, so what we have is our mandrel bender four by two, and uh, the difference between this mandrel bender and all the other big uh, machines that are out there, um, this particular one will bend uh, 100 degrees. So it's uh, done with a big bend cylinder and a lever, and uh, it's totally hydraulically actuated. So we have a hydraulic actuator for the bend rotation, hydraulic actuation for clamp, hydraulic for mandrel, pressure die, and pressure die assist. Uh, one different thing that we do versus some other machines is uh, we use leaf style tooling, which means that the, uh, the tubing is captured and this is considered a leaf on top of it versus a, an actuating top clamp die. Um, it seems like we have much better control of the material as it's fully trapped and it uh, comes apart real nice. So it's a real nice tool design. Um, we also use a traveling clamp die that travels with the bend die. So it's a totally independent system that clamps to the die. And uh, when the bend is done, it, auto, it also releases. So it's an independent swinging clamping system. Uh, the pressure die and pressure die assist are, are pretty typical and standard in the mandrel bending world. Uh, the pressure die advances ahead hydraulically and with uh, another hydraulic cylinder, it can be controlled to follow and put boost on the material as it's bending. Uh, the mandrels we use are, uh, this particular one is a, a mandrel that can bend either easy way or hard way with the same mandrel. Okay, so the machine uh, shown right here has a 20 foot table on it. Um, this is for obviously for doing longer uh, pieces of material. Uh, the machine is available in both 20 footer and 10 foot tables. Okay, so this is our mandrel extraction station. And uh, it's very simple. Uh, the cylinder extends, retracts. There's two sensors to um, mark its location and tell the controller where it is. Uh, what we utilize, because when you're bending rectangular tubing, the material needs to be pulled out from the die and rotated. Uh, we use a universal joint and a swivel joint. So the mandrel rod can actually pivot out of the way. You can freely rotate the material and it doesn't change your mandrel setting. Reinsert it into the bend die and uh, your position is never lost. All right, so this is uh, from power up what needs to happen with the controller. So it takes a while for it to boot. All right, after every power up, the controller is going to ensure that the machine is at zero position. So you have to agree to this to reset zero position. The machine does not remember its position after it's been powered off and started back up. So I'm just saying that I'm agreeing to this. And what I need to do then is I need to make sure that the machine is at its zero. So by doing that, I'd have to turn the pump on to do anything. Go to jog spindle. And what I'm going to do is right now it says one degree. Okay, I'm just backing the machine up with the hydraulics, which I just did. And I'm going to press and hold this and it resets it to zero. So that is our new zero position. Um, if you don't turn the power off, you don't have to reset zero. Okay, now that my zero position is set, I have more options available. I can jog spindle, single bend mode, or multiple bend mode. Now basically jogging spindle is just that. It allows me to jog the spindle forward or backwards. Um, it will only let you jog the spindle if everything is in the home condition, uh, meaning the clamp die cylinder is retracted, the pressure die cylinder is retracted, the mandrel is retracted. If any of those things are not retracted, um, it, won't let you, it won't let you rotate the spindle. And it'll give you warnings telling you that something is wrong. For example, this is now off. I press the pedal. It warns me and tells me that I can't move the spindle because all these fun or this function is not um, is not at home. 
If it's green, that means that it, that function is okay. If it's red, that means the function needs to be corrected. So to correct it, I bring it back. Now the spindle moves. Okay, for single bend mode, we're gonna do just that. We're gonna go to single bend mode. And in single bend mode, it lets you do just one bend. So your bend is controlled by these two white fields right here. If you wanna change your bend angle, you simply touch the field, change it to your desired degree, and then the spring back value is an additive number. Um, so we'll do a 90 degree bend. Okay, the, uh, the selector switch here is an automatic advancing selector switch. Um, it will automatically advance to the next uh, cycle in line that needs to happen. But if you don't want to do it that way, you just have to touch it and you can select any one that you want. The way the machine is set up right now, it's mandrel extends first, then the clamp die, then the pressure die. Uh, you have to make sure that the functions are completed um, before you go on to the next one. For instance, you select mandrel, mandrel has to extend, reach its full limit before you engage another axis or it could get hung up in between. So we're gonna go ahead and do just that. I'm going to extend the mandrel. So the mandrel is coming ahead right now. It's, it's telling you that it's coming ahead because those two are red indicators. It automatically switched to clamp, which is the next in line. I'm going to agree to that. And you do have to pay attention, make sure there's no hands or fingers or other people um, around the machine when you're activating. The clamp is, you can tell it's moving. Once it makes it to the end, it tells you there that it's there. Now the pressure die is next. I'm gonna extend the pressure die. Again, it shows that it's moving. Now the machine will not let you bend unless we have all green indicators on the right hand side. If any one of those indicators is not green, that means the limit switch is not made and the machine will not rotate and it'll tell you a warning that it's uh, something is not good to, to bend. Okay, so that was an example of a single bend mode. Now we're gonna do the multiple bend mode. So to go to do multiple bend, um, you enter into the field and what you have to do is, it, it's showing us the current program that's up, and that was a frame rail that we did. So you go to Viewer, Edit, Active, and here are the programs that are available, or that were already created. So we have one test program, and we have a frame rail that's been created. So if we want to do a new one, we go View Active, type here. Uh, let's see, Manage Dub. and select create new job. Okay, now we can name it. So it comes up with a default name if we want to name it. You can name it whatever alphanumeric that you want. Um, I'll just call it test two. Um, okay, so it's called test two right now. And in here, all the data fields are at zeros. So if the data field is zero, it skips past it and doesn't do it. So you just touch the field, first bend angle, if this is a generic part, we want 90 degrees, second bend angle, 45 degrees, uh, to spring back. I've been using uh, two, um, two degrees of spring back is pretty typical for uh, this two by four. And then there's linear position and rotary position, and those are just documented fields. So if you have a position marked that you want to advance your material to, it'll store that data. And rotary position, if it stays on the same plane, it's zero. If it gets rotated, it would be 90. Um, and if we're running with square, or I'm sorry, it'd be 180. If we're running square, then it could be um, 90, 270, 360. Okay, so once it's, uh, your fields are entered, you go to manage job and save it, and you can save and run it. So now it puts us right into the running screen and it shows that it's test two is what I called it. 
Our first bend angle is 90, our spring back is two. So this also has auto sequencer, and once you've proven out a bend in single bend mode, you can go ahead and use auto sequencer, and that will do all the clamping functions and everything um, by itself, and open all the functions up by itself as well. So you, you never have to touch the screen um, when you're in auto sequencing mode. You're just advancing material and pressing the foot pedal and it'll start going all by itself. So the, the mandrel is a critical setup on this machine and uh, you never want to advance the mandrel without any material around it. Um, there are interference areas in here and the machine does not know if it has material or not. So if you advance the mandrel right now with nothing on it, the mandrel can extend, hit something, bend the mandrel rod, bad things happen. So you always want to put a piece of dummy material on, extend the mandrel first, then pull the material off to get your mandrel setting correct. So I'm just gonna hold the mandrel rod up and we're gonna install a piece of tubing. Okay, let's stop here. Okay, now I'm going to extend the mandrel. The tubing is protecting it from hitting anything important. Okay, so I have my sample piece of tubing on and now we're gonna extend the mandrel. This is a safe way to do it. It won't crash into anything. So go ahead. Okay, the mandrel's extending right now. Okay, the mandrel's fully extended. And now I'm gonna pull my, my sample tube off and we're gonna verify the mandrel position. So you swing your clamp die out of the way. So right here you'll notice I have two lines on the bend die. The first line is zero or tangent. The next line is three eighths of an inch this way past tangent. And if you notice the body of the mandrel is right on that three eighths bend line. And that's where we want to have the mandrel positioned. All right, lubrication is very important to the, uh, to the function of uh, bending square, actually any mandrel, uh, tooling, um, it, you want to reduce the drag as much as possible inside and inside is where all the drag is being created. So you can never have too much lube on the mandrel on the inside. So we're going to insert this piece. The, also the mandrel rod on this is hollow and it could be hooked up with a pump to uh, automatically pump the lube onto the mandrel. So there's a lubed mandrel with tubing inserted. All right, here we go. This is a 90 degree bend with two degrees of spring bracket. Pressure die. And we're going to do a 90 degree bend. <laughs> 